will be a track meet between number four Florida and unsung runner Eric Rett and gritty 14th ranked Tennessee, which literally stole one from the dogs last week. Tribute to the Vols and their interim head coach Philip Fulmer. The offensive coordinator is filling in for Johnny Majors. And speaking of Coach Majors, he joined us now live from his home outside Knoxville. Coach, great to see you. You look great. I'm curious, though, how much control and contact have you had with your staff and your team? Are you helping with game plans? Are you phoning in plays to the press box? Uh, no, I'm not. The closest I've been to it, I've been to my office uh, three or four times, once a pretty good while, and then quite a bit yesterday, just doing some paperwork. I watched a few film, very small amount there, a few at home, but I've had no input because of rules that we have to abide by. And Andy Kelly, our former quarterback, has been standing in as far as the uh, extra coach. What have the doctors told you about returning to coaching, and, and have you made a decision on when you might come back? Well, the, the doctors are very optimistic about my uh, progress. Uh, they both said that uh, my cardiologist and the surgeon both have said that I am ahead of the game. Uh, they like my attitude. <laughs> I felt very good. I have a little tenderness in my chest. Other than that, uh, I'm feeling better every day. Uh, frankly, I think I'll be back pretty soon. I know you were talking to uh, administrators there about extending your contract before the health problems came up. Are you still planning to coach a few more years, or is there a slight chance uh, you might call it quits after this season? Uh, there's no chance whatsoever I would call it quits after this season. I will definitely be back uh, this season, uh, and soon, I believe, very soon, uh, unless something unforeseen happens. I have no plans to retire in, in the immediate future. I uh, plan to coach for several years in the uh, future, and both doctors have been very optimistic about my chances. That's terrific news. Now, as you watch the game today, the Vols and the Gators, what does Tennessee have to do to pull off another upset? Well, Tennessee has to rush the ball better than we did last year. Interestingly, the last two games at Florida last year, we were held to less than 60 or 70 yards rushing, plus we had five turnovers, including a, a blocked punt. Conversely, up here two years ago, we whipped Florida 45 to 3 or something. The score was, was 7 to 3 at halftime in our favor, but we broke a long kickoff return to start the half. We broke a long punt return. We won the ratio game, plus we had a better rushing percentage. And Florida had about 50 yards rushing. So the rushing game and the turnover ratio have been the big factors the last two years. I believe Tennessee will have to get the edge in the turnover ratio. Because I feel Florida is so explosive offensively. They have ultimate confidence, uh, particularly with their quarterback and their wide receivers. And their defense does not have as big a drop off as I thought they might have losing those two great tackles last year. You look so calm. I can't believe you don't have butterflies watching the team on TV well, today. <laughs> I tell you, Lee can tell you this. Uh, Lee and I have gone back a long time. Uh, th there's a lot different uh, sitting here, a lot different. Uh, I don't have any butterflies now, but once I go in and turn that television on about 12 o'clock prior to the game, <laughs> I'm sure my adrenaline will be flowing more. But on the sideline, it never changes. It's there all the time until the final whistle blows. I'm glad to see you're feeling great. Thanks for joining us this morning, and we look forward to your return real soon. Thank you. Lee, that's great news. Well, I, I, I've known Johnny for over 30 years. I think he tried to audition for my job. <laughs> what a terrific. He did a pretty good job. Listen, yeah. I'm telling you, Johnny Majors will never retire. They'll have to carry him off the football field. He loves coaching that much. The yeah, newest know. kid on the block in the Southeastern Conference, Heath Schuler of the Tennessee Volunteers. And last Saturday, he calmly walked into Athens, Georgia, and gunned down the Georgia Bulldogs. Today, he is matched against the pride of the Florida Gators, Shane Matthews, two-time SEC Player of the Year. This time, he's going for a third. Coming up, it is going to be Florida and Tennessee. Right after this message, and a word from our ABC station. A sea of orange, Knoxville, Tennessee, on a football Saturday afternoon. The College Football Association and the Southeastern Conference with a major confrontation between Florida and Tennessee. We'll have a crowd in excess of 95,000. Welcome, everybody. I'm Brad Musburger. As you know, this year the Southeastern Conference expanded and split into two divisions. Let's take a look at the East. With Tennessee's upset of Georgia last week, they could be in the driver's seat, but 
they must hold off favored Florida here this afternoon. The Gators are trying to back up their win of a year ago. Then out west, Alabama is the favorite. And on December 5th, they'll come together in Birmingham for the championship game of the SEC. Again, Johnny Majors will be missing from the Tennessee sideline. He is recovering from heart surgery. Yesterday, our Julie Moran was able to catch up with him. Coach, everyone's concerned with your health. We want to know how you're feeling, what your doctors tell you, and the question on everybody's mind when you're coming back. I'm feeling very good, uh, very well or whatever. I uh, feeling better every day in every way. I, uh, I've had good medical attention. I think great uh, physicians, great care in the hospital, UT Hospital, and great care at home for my wife, Marilyn, and my mother who came up for a week, and many friends and fans who've been very supportive. Number two, I, uh, I don't know when I will be back yet. In fact, I don't think today is appropriate day to mention that. I think we should keep our minds on trying to whip the Gators, what little I can help this week. Uh, I will be able to come back this year. I hope in not the, uh, the too distant future. Well, Dick Vermeil, I understand we've been experiencing some audio problems along the line. We'll get those cleared up. Now let's get to Philip Fulmer. He's got to design the game plan today for Florida. Well, Brent, last year, Florida shut down Tennessee's running attack, only giving up 49 yards. Consequently, the Tennessee staff has organized a running game plan that they think with different formations they can run the football efficiently, keep Florida, Shane Matthews, and their offense on the bench, and then mix in the passing game. But there's nothing like Steve Spurrier in this conference. Well, you know what Steve Spurrier is concerned about? He is concerned about the crowd noise. They run a very sophisticated offense. Consequently, he's going to call all the plays from the sideline, as he normally does, but no audibles. Very simple calls. Pass protections will not have to be audible to. Running plays will not have to be audible to. And gradually get into a check system as the ball game goes along. Well, it's remarkable. This is the only place where Spurrier's lost a conference game. We'll be back with a kickoff. The world, the man with the visor, Steve Spurrier, won a Heisman Trophy down at Florida in 1966, has done a remarkable job here. Philip Fulmer, who took over and is now the interim coach as Johnny Majors recovers from heart surgery. Coach Majors expected back before the season is over, and keep that name in mind. Philip Fulmer someday will get an opportunity as a head coach. His volunteers will kick it off. It'll be Joey Chapman, and the fun and gun of Florida will go on the attack. There is Larry Kennedy, one of the defensive backs, back on the goal line, a sea of orange. Underway in Knoxville. Beautiful kick. Shane Matthews. Comeback Shane. Plenty of speed here, Gator fans. Certainly aware. Houston, Jackson, Eric with a T-Rex, and Reggie Green. We want to watch him right away. Number 78, he's the freshman. This is the match of his life today. He steps up in class and takes on a quality rush man. And number 58, Todd Kelly. It'll be a key duel all day long. Rhett gets the first call, and 48, J.J. Surlis brings him down by the shoe tops. The defense, Jeff Tullis, unheralded, number 38. He's done a standout job for the Volunteers through two games. George Kidd, he stripped the ball from Andre Hastings late in the Georgia game as they wrapped it up. J.J. McCluskey and Jason Parker, two new safeties for Shane Matthews to operate against here today. McCluskey, a wide receiver, going both ways. They show blitz, don't come through, Rhett. Now they, he gets around the corner. McCluskey brings him down, but Rhett was able to get the corner turn, wasn't he? Brent, you mentioned that uh, they showed blitz and backed out, as you see on this replay. Larry Marmy, the defensive coordinator for Tennessee, said that's their plan. They're going to show blitz, then back out. They don't want to blitz. Shane Matthews. They want to pretend like they're going to back out, play zone coverages, rush three, cover eight, rush four, cover seven. It's third and three. Will Rhett get the call or will Spurrier throw coming out? He wants to throw. They run the draw. And Rhett gets the first down. 
beautiful action on that play, which they use off their passing game. Here's the big freshman tackle that Brent was talking about, number 78, right-hand side of your screen against Kelly, a real... See, he used a draw technique, and remember, you can use your hands. He jammed him and threw him upfield. Kelly likes to take that hard outside rush. It'll be a good match throughout the ballgame. They took advantage of that outside rush for a first down run, too. Now Kelly going to work against him again, and Rhett pounds away with 41, Reggie Ingram, the middle linebacker, swatting in. Reggie Ingram played very well last week. Brenny already has 16 tackles on the season in just two ball games. That's real good production for an inside linebacker. Dick, all the Florida fans concerned about this young offensive line. What have you seen? I know it's a very early here against Tennessee. Well, I tell you, I had the opportunity to really study them, and uh, I was impressed. Yes, they are young, but very talented. And Reggie Green, the big true freshman, 300-pound left tackle, is the best young offensive tackle, Brent, that I've ever seen in college football. He is, and I'm not just saying that. I really mean it. There was something wrong with the clock. So they're getting that straightened out. Now second and five for the Gators. The toss to Rhett. He'll sweep right behind the fullback. Gets a block and daylight. Knifed out of bounds by Jason Parker, the freshman. Nice run by Rhett. To run outside, you have to get a good block from your tight end. Now, maybe he got a good block or he was holding. Let's see what they call down here. Watch the lead block. They like to favor running on the offset eye as they do again here. Dick. Yes, and you'll see the good block right there on number 94, Willie Richards, and allowed him to get outside. But there is a penalty against Florida. So the holding call against Spurrier's Gators, bring it back, an early mistake. Extremely costly as that was a fine first down run by Eric Redden. Now, now offense is holding, 10 yard penalty, repeat the down. That'll bring the ball back to the Gators 27 yard line. Early moments here of this showdown in the Eastern Division of the Southeastern Conference. Florida is a great draw football team. Everybody talks about coordinating the draw with the passing game, but they run more draws than any passing team I've seen in college. Second and 15. And Matthew steps up against the pressure and is put down at the 30-yard line. That was Jeff Tullis, number 38. Jeff Tullis is really something. His nickname is Tool Shed. Here he is right here on your screen. They call him Tool Shed because he's been around so long, and he's always handy, and he's always coming. He's always working hard, and here's Tool Shed making a nice stop. Dick, they have moved the tight end, Greg Keller, over on Kelly to give Green some assistance. Now, they switch Keller in this set on third and 13. Kelly gets in as Matthews releases incomplete. Kelly on a spin move on the inside came off of Green and delivered the blow. We'll take, we'll take a look at the move now that Kelly right here is trying to go underneath the young tackle, and he got underneath him. See, the young tackle, Reggie Green, sent a little too deep, and it gave Kelly the room to use that spin move underneath. That's Sean Summers back to return Shane Edge's punt. How about a football team with two Shanes? This one's spelled a little bit differently. S-H-A-Y-N-E, and he's an outstanding punter. This could be pivotal if this gets into a hard-fought defensive game. That's a return-type punt. It'll be Summers at the 24. Summers looking for an alley is crushed at the 30-yard line, and a penalty flag comes flying. yards flipping Boy. so over on 
Steve Spurrier's sideline not happy about that first series the holding penalty costly we have an illegal block in the back 10 yards during the return first down so when we come back to Knoxville Tennessee the volunteers will have a first and ten coming out from their own 29 yard line He's from Bryson City, North Carolina. But in that part of North Carolina, there are more volunteer fans than Tar Heel fans. And he's close by. 18 of his friends and relatives watching. Craig Faulkner was his favorite target a week ago. There are the rest of the members. Mike Stoll, outstanding offensive tackle for Tennessee, number 59. Now we'll watch Heath Schuler, dangerous as a runner. I'm sure the Gator defense has looked at the videotapes from a week ago in Athens, Georgia, they're well aware of it. They line up in the basic eye. Aaron Hayden, Tennessee, looks to establish the running game with Hayden getting the first call up the middle and into the arms of Mark Campbell as we establish now the Florida defense a little bit unorthodox. Henry McMillan is a fine defensive end for the Gators. Now, Ben Hanks is a bandit back. Wearing Steve Spurrier's old number. Will White a dandy free safety. But the Gator back, Monty Grove, comes up so close to the line of scrimmage. They basically work with three defensive backs and an extra linebacker type in that alignment. So they figure to be a little difficult to run on. And you can see the linebackers now stepping up into the gaps and backing away. As here comes Hayden. They're trying to cut him off. Ooh, and 61 right. did just that. Ellis Johnson. Dick, that, I would think that this Gator defense would be basically difficult to run against. Well, it's basically an eight-man front, and Ron Zook, the defensive coordinator, told me last night he's going to do more with it. He is going to blitz Tennessee. First off, inexperienced quarterback, a young guy, talented, but he wants to come after him with the blitzes. Either seven-man, eight-man, or nine people coming. Then he wants to bluff it, but he always wants them concerned that they're coming. Think they'll throw it here on third and six? Most likely. <laughs> You see the receivers spread to the right. Schuler brings the end around. And didn't fool anybody. Mark Campbell is there defensively. It's three and out. See, Mark Campbell got penetration. And that play, a reverse slow and developing. You'll see it penetration by two people there. Ellis pushed it up underneath. And there's Campbell, 67. Take another look. You'll see the penetration from the right side of your screen. Ellis is up there. And he just fell into it. Campbell did. Good defense. Good backside pursuit. Left-footed punter Tom Hutton. There's speed awaiting this. And Willie Jackson dancing back at the gate of 40. And out of bounds at the 42. No score. Tennessee and Florida jockeying for position here in Knoxville. Herbert Arena, is it? Well, Brent, a factor that needs to be addressed in this game is the turf factor. One of the very first things Coach Spurrier did when he got to Florida was tear up the artificial turf at Florida Field and replace it with grass. In fact, he even had it negotiated in his contract before conceding to come to Florida. He does not like the turf, and that is very evident in his record. Coach Spurrier has only lost four games since coming to Florida. Three of those four are on the turf, and a big loss in 1990 right here. Yeah, Julie, you never put a carpet down in a swamp. Can't do it. <laughs> First and ten now from the 42. Let's watch Shane Matthews go to work again, and there's a penalty flag down. Appeared to be movement there before the snap. It may have been on big Reggie Green, the young freshman offensive tackle. He's thinking about that last spin move that Todd Kelly made on him. Soft start on the offense. First down. You'll see number 78. There's that big fella. You'll see him to the right side of your screen. See, he'll lift that hand just a little early. A little early. Actually, he allowed the defensive movement to really pull him off. So that's freshman inexperience. He bit. And this will be a duel worth watching all day. Kelly is cut off, jammed up. Matthews delivers the ball underneath to his running back. Kevin Randolph sliding out as a receiver. 13-yard gain for the Gators. 
you'll see the defense went all zone. They drop out of here like this, and they check down the fullback in front of the zone. That's one problem with going all zone. See him check down there? The linebackers have dropped out of there, plowed the big hole. Actually, one linebacker didn't drop properly. The ball at midfield. The toss to Rhett. Fine-looking runner is J.J. McCluskey, who will go both ways today as a wide receiver and a safety makes the stop. He was recruited out of Knoxville as a defensive back. They were short of wide receivers. He was a walk-on here with the volunteers. Switched over there, and now today, back on defense. You know, Brent, he already has his degree in political science. He's in the graduate school of sports management right now. Fine young man. Steps over to the left, fires complete for another Gator first down. Harrison Houston wide open. Watch the reaction the play action has on the linebacker. See, it just freezes and allows the slot man to the right side of his. See, they have to acknowledge that run. That keeps him close to the line of scrimmage. That allows the slot man to work in that hole in that zone coverage. Good tackle by Jason Parker, number seven. So Rhett receiving some attention on the Florida sideline out of the game. And Tony Davis, number 21, very deep in that backfield, isn't it? Sets up the block for Matthews and fires complete to Houston again. See, again now, Tennessee staying with that zone principle, either rush three and cover with eight or rush four and cover with a seven. Very seldom will they blitz. If they are going to blitz, Brent, they'll blitz more down in here where their defenders don't have as much room and field to defend. First and 10, Florida on the move with their second possession. They're into that Gator zone inside the 20. And Matthews with good protection fires for the end zone incomplete. Houston. What they did was run a little play action inside off the draw fake, and they took the outside receiver and brought him in and ran the inside man trying to get man coverage to the corner. Pretty good coverage all the way because they went zone. See? Now see the delay on the outside. Now they have the safeties coming over there and good safety coverage right there by Jason Parker, number seven. See, if you're in position as a safety, you should be able to make that play. But boy, that works closer than I thought. Five defensive backs for Tennessee as Bennett checks in and Matthews to throw against them. Plenty of time. Receivers were covered and Matthews takes off. Penalty flag is thrown as Matthews steps out at the 12. And words are exchanged you know, between several Gators and McCluskey. One thing is to be aggressive. The other thing is to be intelligent at the same time. Sometimes the young kids, they're young, they get so intense and so excited that they forget where that sideline is and go after somebody improperly. Here's Shane Matthews coming down the side. He's out of bounds right there, yeah. Actually, that's not a vicious hit. I wouldn't call that. Ben Talley, number 90. I, to me, he was trying to pull off when contact was made. No follow through. Poor call. How would you call that, Brent? No, I agree with you. I thought it was a, it was kind of interesting at the end that Matthews McCluskey was obviously trying to get out of the way, and then later words were exchanged over there. But McCluskey certainly didn't uh, didn't hit Shane over there. But it does give the Gators an excellent opportunity here to, to stick it in. We have a dead ball, personal foul against the defense. Automatic first down. Now the officials have to decide they haven't put the ball down yet. The Tennessee defense standing inside their five-yard line. That ball is still on the out-of-bounds marker over there at the 12 as the officials are trying to sort out the halfway point here. Coach 
Coach Spurrier's offensive team is so well prepared. They do an excellent job in the situation phases of the game. Third down conversion inside that red zone. Three of five inside last week. Doing a good job of coaching. Ball is put down at the six-yard line. So this is a first and goal for Florida. Davis still in the Gator backfield. Bilkey the fullback. The toss to Davis. Jammed up and out of bounds. And it'll be marked at about the four-yard line. It'll be second and goal. That was Ingram giving pursuit. Well, there was a super block on that play by the substitute running back, Chris Belke, number 39. You'll see him at the right back right here. He does a real nice job of getting a lead block. You'll see him make contact right there and see him stick and stay. Good fundamental technique of striking and working his feet, keeping his hands in proper position. Good job by Chris Belke. Florida likes to throw going in. Here comes Houston on the end around Tennessee not fooled. Beautiful defensive play by Jason Parker the freshman safety. Well Jason Parker was the safety that blew the coverage right before the half last week Brent against Georgia and gave him a touchdown. This time he saves a touchdown. You'll see what I'm talking about right here. They run a counter play started and come back rather this way. And he is at home like he should be. See, here he comes now. Now, you'll see Jason Parker appear right there. The reason he was there, he was locked on man-to-man -man on that wing back in pass coverage. Now third and goal. The Gators are confused with their personnel. And timeout is called by Florida. Bilkey didn't realize that he should have been off the field in this formation. And it costs the Gators a timeout. It'll be third and goal from the five. Julie Moran, why isn't Eric Red on the field for the Gators now? Well, Brent, Eric sprained his ankle just a little bit. They just retaped him, but he refused to wear high tops in the beginning of the game. Now he wants the high tops. They've sent out for the high tops, and they feel like he's going to be better on with the high tops when they bring those back out here. So missing you know, their standout tailback, Eric Rett, with this important third end goal at the Tennessee five-yard line. They spread him out here, Brent, with a no-back attack. They have five immediate receivers, forces you into some kind of a man coverage. Tough to play that against zone. Matthews runs the quarterback draw down at the five-yard line. Parker was there along with Surlis. Florida forced to attempt a field goal. This was one of the few weaknesses in their game against Kentucky. Actually, it's a little tougher to kick efficiently a field goal from this distance that is a little ways out, Brent, because that angle with that narrow goal post minus that four foot ten inches in the rule change last year, that's a drastic angle from there. Shane Edge will put it down on the 12, a 22-yard field goal by Edmison, the freshman, on its way. No good. A fine goal line stand by Tennessee after the personal foul penalty. Here's the field goal miss. Actually, Bart Edmondson thought he made it. He gives the signal. He thought he had it. But the official right there standing under the goalpost said, no Whoa. way. But he thought he had it. Watch him give him the signal here. I think he's sure. trying to con job, Brent. Well, I'm going to tell you something. <laughs> from my angle, on that replay, I thought he had it too. Yeah. Did anybody else agree with me out there in TV it, land? It, it I looked mean, close. I, you know, I'm cold. not an official up here in the booth, but I want to tell you when I looked down when you said that. It, but again, an angle can can be a distortion here. Here's that goalpost. No. Freeze it right there. Freeze it right there. Boy, I'll tell you. I'm going to tell you something, folks. Depends on how you draw the line. That's a crooked line you drew. <laughs> First and ten for Tennessee. He's Schuler. Man, Gator fans down at Gainesville aren't happy by that call. Now it's Hayden for about three tough yards. Let's check in with John Saunders in New York. What do you got, big fella? Got a long way to go in that one, John. That'll be about a four-hour and 30-minute game. Schuler hands to the fullback Brunson. 
who smashes out to the 27 and into the arms of Kevin Carter. They're trying to slow down that good pass rush of Florida with trap blocking. That time, they took the offensive right guard, Jeff Smith, and pulled him and trapped him. Now, watch him pull across the screen here and trap the opposite side. See, they try to get him up here. Boom, nice block, good technique, and run it up inside there. That slows down pass rushers. New running backs. Garner on third and two. Looks like blitz, Brent. He's the J.C. Wiz. Yeah, here they come. Here he comes against it. First down, and he breaks it at the 40. On his first carry to the 46-yard line. They were blitzing their outside linebackers, so they weren't in, in a position to fill once he popped up inside there. Good blocking at the point of attack, no penetration. And again, the disadvantage of a blitz is you commit so many people to rushing, there's no one to fill outside, inside. So Charlie Garner for 17 yards and a volunteer first down. He's audibling here. Here's Garner again, and nothing doing. Big hit by McMillan. He actually was stumbling before he got to the line of scrimmage. Charlie Garner is uh, the fastest running back they have. He's a junior college transfer and just really learning the offense. Ran for over 2,000 yards as a freshman in junior college. Got hurt the next year, only ran for 800 and something. But he is the guy that can break the long run. Dick, is there a danger that Tennessee is a little too conservative in this game so far? Actually, if I were Tennessee coaches, I'd be a little bit excited right now because Florida missing that field goal helps pump your squad up and it deflates the visitor. Now let's see what Heath Schuler does. He rolls to the right, has time, throws back to the left in the far side, double coverage incomplete. He threw into the teeth of the Gator coverage that time, determined to go back to that side to his wide receiver, Ronald Davis, number one. Excellent safety play there by Dell Spear, who was actually playing the right safety in, in a two deep 50% of the field. Did a nice job. Coming up, we have a doubleheader today. The Fighting Irish of Notre Dame. What do you think? Should they have picked after that time? Third down and 10, and Schuler straight back. Incomplete. Not a real well-thrown ball that time, was it? Good coverage. He took away where he wanted to go with the ball initially. Then he went to his layoff, and there's linebackers covering the layoff people. No one to throw to. Good pass defense by Ron Zook's secondary. So the states of Tennessee and Florida in a typical Southeastern Conference war. Scoreless here in the early going. Florida misfiring on a short field goal. Wheaton hangs one high and here's Jackson Hanson back to the middle breaks a tackle and he's down at the 27 and a penalty flag flies see what they call here Brent Last week, Tennessee did not do. Got pushing on the return team. Tennessee didn't do a good job of, of punt coverage, and they really emphasized it and got to the fundamental problems that they had last week of, of linemen not uh, bending their knees and settling it before they try to make tackles, and they missed a lot of them last week. Steve Spurrier has to be concerned about the number of mistakes that the Gators have made here in the early going. That penalty has moved the ball back to the Florida 17-yard line. Matthews on that inside pitch to Davis as Eric Red is still out of the game and Todd Kelly read it well. See, that's really a shuffle draw. I have not seen a team run that kind of play before. Normally, when you run the shuffle, you sprint to one side and the back comes with you. In this place, the back was just sitting here. Another well, huge crowd. In fact, this is the third largest crowd in history, and they've had some big ones. Standing room only. 97,000 on hand. The draw play. 
to the 20 yard line and Reggie Ingram is there defensively. Now Steve Spurrier had a rather unique way of getting the Gators ready for this huge crowd here in Knoxville. Here's what he had to say. So what we've tried to do is just try to practice this week with no one able to hear anything. So you get involved in a lot of hand signals. Uh, hopefully our pass protection will hold up and then maybe we can just sort of change the patterns against the coverage if we have to. So it involves some different type of coaching. Great coverage that time by Tevio Henson. Tevio Henson was in position all the way. They ran both backs out of the backfield away from the direction they threw the ball trying to keep the free safety at home. But Tevio Henson was right there. He's a walk-on, Brent. We've, Todd Kelly was coming again, number 58. Here's the battle. Where, there's a spin move, but this time Big Reggie Green handles that spin move just a little bit better. That is not Kelly's best move, according to Kelly. He said he's a better speed rusher on the outside, but that's going to be a duel we'll have to check in on throughout the game as Edge will hit this one at about block. It. Tennessee blocks it. Tennessee with a first down at the 12 yard line. There's the young man who did it, Tracy Smith. He came from the left side, got up inside the fullback block one man. He couldn't block the other guy. Here he comes and he dives out in front just like he had to. Good position, good block, and it looked like he got the ball off in good rhythm. The center got it back there. He might have formed, fit that football in his hand just a little too long, but here comes the blocker, Tracy Smith. Big play. Normally, you lose when you get a punt block. Look now, at that field position. Now, Brunson and Hayden in the eye. Schuler, the dangerous runner, a factor certainly inside the 20. Tennessee's best scoring opportunity, looking to throw on first down, and Schuler will hook it. Taken out by Carter at the 12-yard line. Wonderful team speed on this Gator defense. They come and get you. Tennessee has done a good job inside the red zone in the years past. They had some problems last week. Last week, 10 of 10 times inside the 20 this season. Seven touchdowns, three field goals. Tennessee doing an excellent job. Tough to do any better than that. Now Faulkner is slotted to Schuler's left. He'll roll in that direction, and he'll keep it to the 10. To the 5, touchdown, Tennessee! Brent, after uh, Heath Schuler's success at rolling out last week, uh, I'm surprised that they let him get out there so cleanly and didn't have a man in a better containment position. John Bexford attempting the extra point. Tennessee leads it 7 0. You'll see right here there's a key block at the point that gets a hook and a good lead block as he sprints to the corner. You need those blocks, but there should be somebody getting there quicker. See, now watch watch Aaron right there. Watch number 24 in the middle of your screen, Aaron Hayden. See, he'll get a little brush block right there. And that's better than a brush block, a knockdown. The quarterback should not be able to run in that cleanly got to get a man in his face. There's a, a block right there by the wide receiver, Faulkner. Here's the block right there. Oh, a knockdown pin. Three points. The difference in the football game, the kicking game. 
Florida misses a field goal that would have put them ahead. Tennessee blocks a punt, gets a first down at the Gator 12. And from there, Schuler runs in from the 11-yard line, his fourth rushing touchdown of the season, and Tennessee upsetting Florida 7-0. for the balls. Houston and Kennedy await the kick. He'll keep it low and Kennedy has it at the four. 20. Oh, and stuck at the 23 yard line by Summers. Wow. Hey, John, what's happening with that other Florida team, Florida State today? Well, Brian, Florida State. Here, John, the Gators are still without their outstanding tailback, Eric Rett, out with an ankle injury. So they'll operate without a running back. Shane Matthews to put it up on first down. That short drop, firing complete to Everett. And Everett steps out at the 42-yard line. You know, I've heard some criticism about Shane Matthews' arm in regard, is it strong enough to be an NFL quarterback? That was a long throw, but it's strong arm. So the ball is put down at the 42-yard line. First down for the Gators. Now Matthews firing that quick screen to the right side, and they bust into Tennessee territory. Willie Jackson, the receiver. Speaking of busting somewhere, how about this one? <laughs> Make the heck of a football game. Nine Eastern. Giants of the Bears. Second down now for the Florida game. Davis on a spin. First down. George Kidd, number 42, the linebacker. Wraps him up. The guy that really did a nice job on that play, Brent, was the defensive left hand, James Wilson, 72. He really did a nice job. Now, just moments ago, Eric Rett was hustled into the Florida locker room. So he was not on the field when the Gators failed down there on third and five because of an apparent ankle injury. He'd already carried six times for 21 yards when he left. And it has certainly altered the scheme of things here. Matthews, right side, incomplete as Jackson broke free. You know, Shane Matthews got rid of that ball quickly on that kind of fade pattern in a five-step drop, but Reggie Green is improving in his ability to pass protect Todd Kelly. I'm out, and we come to the end of the first quarter. The interim coach, Philip Fulmer, that's his son, Philip Jr. there, carrying the cable for dad. Fulmer turned down an assistance job with the Tampa Bay Buccaneers a couple years ago. Hopes someday to become a head coach in college football, and the young man loves to stay right close to his dad, doesn't he? Now, for Florida, it is second and ten. The ball is at the Tennessee 45-yard line. Eric Rick, backside, and they seal Matthews up. James Wilson, number 72, was coming. And Horace Morris, number 85. It was a mistake in pass protection on the left side of the offensive line. Reggie Green blocked down, and you'll see what I'm talking about. He'll block down here and turns the defensive end loose coming from the outside. See him down there? He should not have done that. That's a mental mistake, a breakdown, and Horace Morris can run a 4-5-40. That's too much speed to turn loose. Now it's third and long. Bilkey. The running back. Matthews under pressure again. Well short of the first down. Julie Moran, what do we hear about Eric Red? Well, Brent, I just talked with the Tennessee team doctor. He sprained his ankle when he put on the high top and went back in the game. He, he aggravated the injury even further. So they've taken him in the locker room. He's got his foot on ice. He's staying out of the heat, and they're going to try him in the second half. Sounds like a great shoe controversy to me. You know, Brent, they're losing the number one rusher in the SEC last year, 193 yards last week. They're 11 and 0 when he's run for 100 yards or better. They need him. Edge 
His last punt was blocked. That set up the only touchdown of the game. Too good a punt. That's going in the end zone. Oh, no. Great bounce. Woo. Downed at the five-yard line. That's a gator hop. Number 85 on this speed rush. Reggie kind of moves towards somebody else, and here comes Horace. And Julie Moran, he's quite a story. He sure is, Brent. He lost contact with his family for about two days during Hurricane Andrew. And I, I hear that we have his mom, Lillian, on the phone. Lillian, are you there? Yes, I am. Well, Horace was very concerned. He said it was hard for him to concentrate when he couldn't find you. Yes, I know, because our phone was out for a while. Well, how long did it take, and, and how did you finally make contact with each other? Well, it took about, about two days. Right. And we finally got him, and he was very happy to hear from us. Describe the scene. Describe the scene for me a little bit down there during the hurricane. Well, it was very bad, very windy. Horace tells me you had to drive for ice. You didn't have lights for six or seven days, and he said I'd watch the news and wonder where my mother was. <laughs> yes, we had to drive as far as West Palm Beach to get ice and well, water. Well, Lillian, I know you have a bunch of people over there watching the game. Enjoy it, and thanks for calling us. Okay, tonight. thank you. Thanks, Julie, and uh, Horace's mom, and your hearts go out to all those folks who suffered down there, not only in South Florida, but Louisiana, and now over in the state of Hawaii. And we get an opportunity in this broadcast, we'll put that Red Cross number back up, because there are folks that have really stood tall in all these disasters. Here it is, Tennessee with the ball, and a 7-0 lead against Florida, and just trying to rough it out down that pit area. Dick Vermeil, some of the folks might have just joined us here. It's early on Saturday, been out doing some errands. What would you say is an overview of what we've watched here so far? Actually, I don't think the score is indicative of the way the game went. Florida has moved the ball better, but they got a punt block down inside that 20-yard line. That's a short field. Tennessee takes it on in and scores. They need two yards on this third down. Brunson, the fullback, gets it. Keeps the drive alive, and right now we'd like to pause five seconds along the line for our ABC stations to identify themselves. This is WCBD TV, Charleston. Knoxville, Tennessee. With Julie Moran and Dick Vermeil, I'm Brent Musburger. Nice to have you with us. Tennessee and Florida in the Eastern Division of the Southeastern Conference. Tennessee coming off an upset of Georgia in Athens. The Gators opened at home with a big win over Kentucky. And the winner here today takes charge of the East. Florida will still have a big one late in the season against Georgia. But remember on Thursday night, they turn right around and go over to Mississippi State. This is a tough week for the Gators. Now, here is the young man, Garner, and he's got some quickness, doesn't he? Out to the 31-yard line. See, what Tennessee is doing is they're splitting both tight ends. I'll show you here on the Telestrator what they're doing. They're splitting both tight ends out of ways. Now, what this does is forces the defensive tackles to come down lighter, tighter and get the ends out wider, and it gives them that room to go ahead and cut back up inside. Now watch this. See that lane that's created right there? Freeze it right there. See that lane right here? That's what he was looking for. Good and game planning. Garner makes the most of it. 16-yard gain. Another Tennessee first down. They'll pitch Garner wide to the right, and he got between two defenders and busted to the 36-yard line. Nice-looking young running back. Yes, but I'll tell you, Rodney Gordon, the right offensive tackle, did an awfully good job of book-blocking Kevin Carter, the defensive end. That's what allowed him to get out there in the first place. Well, it Shuler shows a lot of poise for a true sophomore quarterback playing his second game, third game, doesn't he? Two tight ends. Dick stand up for Tennessee, and Shuler will bring the option down the line and keep it. First down, Tennessee. There's that poise. Good little running series. See, they ran the freeze trap option inside. That trap makes the defensive lineman close. He didn't give the ball to the fullback. He kept it and came down the line of scrimmage. Had the option of keeping or pitching it out. So next, we'll take you up to Michigan State for that confrontation with the Irish and the Spartans. Notre Dame, Michigan State. 
they're staying with those two flex tight ends right now, forcing them to reduce their defensive ends. Blitz. Here's Garner. And Grow missed him a second time, but forced him back. And number 57, Kevin Carter, did the rest. But that was Grow who came busting across and broke it up. Grow beat the tight end's block at the point of attack. He got outside. Now, Grow is, is not a true defensive end type guy. He plays what they call the, the, the gator back position. See, he's quick. And he turned it back inside there. There he is, number 10. Then there's good backside leverage on the play. And Kevin Carter, doing what he's supposed to do, makes the play. 18-yard loss, and James Stewart in as the Tennessee running back. Gets the call. Stewart's first call. And that was White bringing him down. Let's check in with John Saunders of New York. John? Florida State and NC State in the Wolf. I thought they were going to walk through the ACC after beating Clemson, but uh, Coach Sheridan's done a good job with that North Carolina State team. Fine coach. Now third and long, Schuler gets excellent position. Down the middle, incomplete. He overthrew his wide receiver, Corey Fleming. He had good time. There's no safety helping him inside. All he had to do was get it there. He is now 0 for 3, and that can work against him. Plus, he's been throwing the ball downfield maybe just a little too far, trying to frighten, I think, Coach Zook, the defensive coordinator from Florida, to blitzing too much. And you're not going to stop this Florida offense all game, are you? No, no way. No way. Smart man, that Dick Vermeer. <laughs> Here's Wheaton, and boy, they were coming after that. They wanted to even up the punt locks, didn't they? Jackson bobbles it, runs it down, and dives on it at the 13-yard line. Very smart. If he had gone back and tried to pick it up, he might have lost the handle. He did not want to risk a turnover down there. We'll be right back to Knoxville. For Shane Matthews, the Florida quarterback lost his mother, and uh, he reflected about that for us. What a play for her. So here are Shane and Florida coming up to the line of scrimmage. Off a play fake on first down, but it was whistled dead. Dick, it looks like the Gators. Dead ball foul. False start on the offense. A lot of mistakes for Spurrier's team today, and it looks like they're going to experiment again at that running back spot. Well, you know, Kendra Malone, their actual, the number two running back, is injured, and he's not here, so number three running back and a true freshman, Tony Davis, is playing in there. A lot of inexperience. From Florida's offensive football team, and that's one of the concerns they had, handling the pressure of playing in Tennessee. Bilkey and Davis are behind Matthews. This is Davis, and he cannot escape Shane Bonham. Shane Bonham did a real nice job of beating Jim Watson on that. It was a draw, and he took that inside move and came right down the line of scrimmage, made a nice play. There's the only veteran in this offensive line. 11 starts last year, won the leadership award in spring practice, graded out 86% in blocking last year. Number two on the offensive line in 91. So here's the matchup. Bonham came off the block that time and helped wrap up Davis. Ingram was also there. Bonham's having a good game, but Ingram, you know, we called his name a lot last week and just filling those holes up inside. He's a physical guy at 6'2", 235, 240, so he can make those inside plays. Last week, Florida did an excellent job of converting third down situations. They 59% of them, number one in the SEC. Boy, do they need that young man. They're fouled up on their huddle call right now. Third and 13. Yeah. And he can't hear down there. I think they well, went past out the of time. time too. Yeah. Having difficulty, and the time ran out. Play clock did expire. 
See, they were having trouble communicating to the wide receiver that time. Quarterback went out and talked to him. By the time he got back to the huddle, too much, too much time gone. Big things in this situation for the offense in, in the noisy end zone like that is keep it simple. Keep it simple. Don't go on the first sound. They have yanked the quarterback out, and they have sent Dean in on this play. Matthews out of the game, and Coach Spurrier, what a tough spot for a quarterback to step into. He's going to roll to the left, throw deep down the sideline, jump ball incomplete. Terry Dean. <laughs> he didn't play last week. He gets in there as a left-hander. SEC academic all-conference football player. Very bright young man. That's a pressure situation. <laughs> wow. Would you send a quarterback into no. that? No. Was wrong. And you know something? In that situation, there was movement on the offensive line that time that they didn't call. They're losing their poise a little bit here. Now, Edge is standing in his own end zone. Has to throw a little confetti out, doesn't he? He's right on the edge, isn't he? <laughs> he sure is that. McCluskey is lined up to the left, trying to get an outside rush if he comes. Lousy punt, really. Fielded by Summers. And Tennessee with excellent, excellent field position. They're at the Gator 30. Things are not going Florida's way, are they? Oh, Smokey's having himself a day. <laughs> Boy, what a great spot to start out your drive here on the 30-yard line. Boy, that's a short field. And Heath Schuler, with his running ability, can make it even shorter. He has scored the game's only touchdown, hasn't completed a pass yet. They've been going deep with him consistently. They've got to let him throw those intermediate patterns. They have not shown pass on first down, and the Gators tighten up at the line. They show eight up at the line of scrimmage right now. And it's Brunson. Outnumbered as he was, he battled for two or three yards into the teeth of that defense. Last week against Georgia, it was Heath Schuler standing up, though, and taking charge, and we asked him about the leadership of this Tennessee team. I think it really it took over during the Georgia game, the, the leadership role that I played in that. Uh, a lot of the times in the first game that I was looking to them for the leadership, and I felt the responsibility going into that game that I, I had to show more of the leadership and be the field general and in order to improve our team. And uh, we had to score in the, the last drive, and uh, I told them, I said, listen, guys, let's, uh, I'll go out, play together as one team, one unit, and uh, we'll get the job done. To Craig Faulkner, who was his favorite target last week in Athens, his first completion of this game against Florida for seven yards. You see, he sprinted out on that, Brent. If they rush or blitz inside and he's outside of it, he's home free. Plus, now it's a higher percentage throw. He gets good blocking there. It's a higher percentage throw. The safety was backed off him like that. He just takes the flat. He goes up, and Willie White makes the tackle. The big thing with the tackle by the safety is just to get him to the ground. You don't have to be a vicious guy. Kevin Carter injured on that play. He received medical attention, so he goes over to the, the Gators sideline. Kevin Carter is a pre-pharmacy student, 3.7 GPA in high school, outstanding student. Talking to the coaches about him last night, they say when he fills in and plays to how he looks, he's going to be an all-conference defensive lineman. First and 10 volunteers, up by seven and driving again. Stewart to the 15. McMillan as Shane Matthews, who was yanked off the field on third and long and replaced by Dean for a play, alone with his thoughts over there on the Florida sideline. I don't look for David Cutliffe, the offensive coordinator, to take any chances down here. He's already in field goal range. He already has a seven-point lead. Don't take a sack. Don't turn it over. Looks like blitz. Here they come. Got a trap. Stewart. Stewart. Touchdown, Tennessee.
Bob Exford. It's 14 nothing Tennessee. The key block on that was Bubba Miller, the fine young redshirt freshman. Watch him pull and trap a cross. Now he gets a good block. Oh, he's coming the other way. Excuse me, I drew it wrong. There's 71, Bubba Miller. Nice job of coming across. Good trap block. Will you live with a blitz? You die by the blitz. Here it is, number 71, left side of your screen. Watch him kick out. There's Stoll, number 59. He seals off inside. Everybody was rushing the passer to get to the quarterback. They run a trap. They are rocking around old Knoxville. And it is the kicking game that has turned everything around here. Florida has missed a field goal. Florida's had a punt block. Florida has bobbled a punt and had to fall on it inside the 15 yard line. Boy, I tell you, and you're giving up those kind of field positions. See, most people don't look at it as a block punt as a turnover, but that's really what it is, Brent. It's not listed as a turnover, but it is a critical turnover. Get me the operator. Houston and Kennedy will try to give the Gators a spark here with four minutes left in the half. It's Houston. Oh, down at the 12-yard line as the Tennessee kicking team swarms all over. Great coverage. But these Tennessee kids are really inspired. And tonight, action say much no. just get the magnum he's, out. he's an action guy give me that big well here is uh, Shane Matthews after being yanked for one play back for the Gators that no back attack with Eric Rett injured firing underneath the Houston and Houston dances to the 30 and a first down a little bit of a sparkling play as George Kidd wraps him up after 19 yards they're going with no huddle So you get in that loose zone and then you file that you find that hole in the zone. Actually, I still believe there's an inside linebacker dropping out of position in those middle zones. It's too big a hole. Four wide receivers. The two Jacksons, Houston and Everett, on the field for Matthew. Throws to a diving That's Jackson at that. the 47 yard line. This is Jack Jackson. Jack Jackson, outstanding student in high school and really shows his outstanding ability to make the difficult catch. Now watch this. He's going up outside. There was a zone coverage out there. He goes up. Now watch him twist around. Good concentration of the ball. He gets the foot down, move the chains. Nice job. Working against the clock, going to their two minute drill. Incomplete. Houston was well covered by the linebacker kid that time. And any time a Tennessee linebacker can stay with this wide receiver <laughs> speed, it has to be considered an advantage, folks. I, I think he took an advantage. I think he grabbed and held well, on to him, Brent. Yeah, get, he get held his, him. <laughs> get his belt with both hands and just hang on. Nobody saw it, but he grabbed the hold of him. This would be huge if Florida can move it down the field and strike before the end of the first half. Matthews trying to do just that incomplete. There is Jackson and Horace Morris coming. Horace Morris came around the outside of Reggie Green late, got off him, and Reggie actually quit taking him hard to the outside, gave up on that block too soon. Steve Spurrier down on that Florida sideline said he felt Shane Matthews was rattled, the noise getting to him. He wasn't handling things the way he should, and he yanked him for a play. That's the word from Spurrier sideline. Matthews now back in. This is a big third down late in the first half. And Matthews attempts to run for it. Steps out of bounds inside the 45. That's very close. Did he get the first down? Good poise. You know, and, uh, Shane Matthews is not known for his running ability. So they'll move the chains there with that ability. He looked like he could move all right there. He got just enough, didn't he? Now Matthews up over the middle to Jackson. Down at the 31-yard line, and this is Willie Jackson. 
See, they're running the delay patterns to the slot man underneath the linebackers, and they're forcing, like Reggie Ingram, the big linebacker, to make the play on those wide receivers coming inside on the delay. Three minutes left in the half. Matthews told me last night in visiting with him, he loves these pressure situations. He loves to be able to audible. This is what he th thinks he does best. So a timeout has been called by Tennessee, and while they do that, let us check in on the primetime lineup, including the big Monday nighter. Here's how the two quarterbacks shape up today, but the key stat for Schuler is his running ability for Tennessee. And he has scored one of their two touchdowns. And had great field position, too, Brent. Now Matthews, under pressure, fires to Houston. And Houston steps out at the first down marker at the 21. It'll be a first down. Roughing the passer. They're calling James Wilson for a late hit. He came off the, he came off the right side of the offense there. Here he is at the bottom of your screen, number 72. Again, a pass protection mistake by James Wilson, number 72. He turned him loose right there. James Wilson was turned loose. I think Ryan Taylor, 76, was supposed to pick him up. You know, Brent, what could be happening, they could be audibling their pass protection down there and someone not hearing it. That was a good call. Can't drop that helmet. Four wide receivers. The trips go to the right side for Matthews. Many times, Brent, Coach Spurrier likes to load one side of the field. It's hoping that he can get one-on-one -on -one coverage back to the other side. If he does, he will get Smith locked up on Jack Jackson, which would be one heck of a duel. Smith stood up last week and was the most outstanding of the Tennessee defensive backs. He's talking to some of his teammates back there in the secondary right now. And they're going to bring the Gators back together and huddle them up again. You know, that Jack Jackson has caught 11 touchdowns in his career already in 56 receptions. That's a ratio of 1 in 5. And when you look at the three starting receivers on this football team at Florida, they all have that ratio of every fifth catch being in the end zone. So you can look for him to throw the ball down here. They had to straighten out where the spot was after the personal foul. The ball was put down right about the 10-yard line, right about the Tennessee 10. It'll be a first down for Florida. Well, that tight end over on the left side is open. He's going to throw to him. Touchdown, Touchdown, Florida. I saw that, Brent. <laughs> There's no way they were going to cover him in that coverage. So Aubrey Hill came off that stand-up position, broke free in the end zone. He was inside of the Jackson-Smith duel. Shane Matthews saw exactly what I saw. One guy splitting the difference between two people. A slotted tight end and a wide receiver, and he saw it, and he got him the ball as quickly as he possibly could. The result, the touchdown. Edmiston. So he adds the extra point. The officials look a little confused there underneath the goalpost, didn't they? Oh, they never get confused. They're never confused. You're watching. He's going to unload the ball quickly. See, he wanted to get rid of He knew it was going to be there. This defender was trying to cover two people. Tracy Smith yeah. trying to cover the wide receiver and Aubrey Hill 82 at the same time. You put your finger on it. When Spurrier and Florida overloaded the right side, the whole defensive, defensive backfield yeah. rotated over there. This and is Smith what he was likes. locked up one-on-one. -on -one. Yeah, many people load you up one side to run combination patterns. Spurrier likes to load you up and get back away from the strength of the coverage. Good coaching. And Smith had no chance, did he? He was working on two receivers that time, in effect, and Shane could have gone the other way. Now, Tennessee apparently realized during that play that they were in trouble. You know, I actually, in coaching experience, Brett, have looked out on the field and saw a wide receiver line up and no defensive back lined up on him and and, w and we didn't get him the football that was almost the same situation right there but they got him the football 
Now Ryan Ruland to kick it off for Florida. will bring it from a yard inside the end zone. Short of the 20, excellent coverage, and a penalty flag comes flying. Was that a late hit over there? Uh, guys, one of the things you have to do in intense football games is direct your intensity to help you. Those kind of fouls are stupid. So that's going to be a personal foul against Florida. Dead ball foul, personal foul on the defense. First down. So you got 11, 10 guys of the 11 trying to do everything can, they can to stop you, and one guy gives you 10 or 15 yards. There was some confusion in that coverage. You'll see at the top of your screen right here, J.J. McCluskey. He's well, he's the one who should have stayed there. Here's first yeah. down. Yeah. If you go back on that play, as a penalty marker comes down here at the 35, McCluskey, had he stayed there, his man would have been Hill, who was coming right over. Hill just simply comes off. He's a standout outside the tackle. You can't see him. He simply runs to the open spot, and Matthews hits him. Now they have one corner trying to cover a guy going down the sideline. There's Smith. See? And, and here's an offensive guy, J.J. McCluskey. We watched him play wide receiver last week, playing the secondary this week. Hey, we've had some strange things going on here in uh, Knoxville today. Florida really gained some momentum again, Noah, with getting that drive going and getting in the end zone. Now first down for the Volunteers. Garner to the 43-yard line. 2.15 left in the first half. McMillan, he's played well for the Gators here in the first half. McMillan is, is a real good football player. You know, he played in the Florida All-Star game against Georgia. The dominating player in high school senior year got 10 sacks alone. That's a lot of sacks because, you know, they don't throw the ball that in, in many, many times in high school conferences. them go through their two-minute drill on the practice field on Thursday. They did a real nice job against themselves, Brent. <laughs> Dead ball foul. Five yards, false start on the offense. I think I mentioned uh, we had that Horace Morris story that if we got an opportunity, we'd put up the Red Cross number. And why don't we do that right now for the uh, folks at home. That's the disaster relief that we've had. And he's sort of in charge right now. I just make darn sure I don't do anything stupid with the football and turn it over. Incomplete. He trapped it. That's Kendrick Jones. In talking with Schuler yesterday, I asked him, you know, most of the time when you talk to a young quarterback and ask him which way would he rather throw the football drop back sprint out play action they normally say drop back because that's you know they see that in pro football not he says coach any way I can throw it I like to throw it big hole for Garner the break three at the 50 inside the 35 yard line Monte Grove brings him down showing why he has replaced Hayden Real good footwork, good maneuverability there in the open fielding. He runs out of a tackle, good cut back. See, he heads out there, he gets a block by Bubba Miller, he cuts back off it. Now watch him run through the arms right there. Run through him. See, you've got to get your arms wrapped around a guy like that. Hit him with your shoulder pads. They didn't do it, consequently, long run. And, and this guy can fly. That 31-yard run may give Tennessee a field goal, goal opportunity. There's a minute and a half left in the first half. Schuler, receiver's clog on the hit, throws complete to the 10-yard line. Forget the field goal, he's going for the six. David Horn with a hit, and Schuler still delivered the ball. Wow. Talk about showing some poise as a sophomore, true sophomore. Drop back pass, he's trying to attack the zones, he sets up and fights down. He knows he's going to get hit. Now watch him jump, he sees the scene, he gets hit, throws the ball as he's in the air, throws a completed pass. Excellent job by Heath Schuler. And Beck Sport 
Stays ready on the Tennessee sideline. Plenty of time now to go for the six, right? 115. Garner in at tailback. Ball's at the 11. Schuler keeps it and follows the fullback for a couple of yards. Wanted to run the option. He has two timeouts. He has one. Now he has one. That's it. Good decision. You know, and their field goal kicker, John Bexford, kicked two for two or three for three last week. And I watched him on the practice field Thursday. And I'll tell you, he nails the ball. I mean, 55 yards was not a challenge for him. What would you call here? Right down here, I'd run play action pass here on second down. I'd run play action pass. And not wait to the third down situation. Would you uh, would you blitz if you were the uh, Florida defensive guy? I don't think I would right now, but if I were going to blitz, I'd blitz with an outside people to prevent the sprint out. Because last week in this situation, Tennessee came with a quarterback on the corner. Today in this situation, going the other way, they got the quarterback on the corner, blocked everybody, and he runs it in. So uh, I would, cut, if I was going to bring anybody, I'd bring them outside wide, Brent. Doubleheader coming up. Next, it'll be the Fighting Irish of Notre Dame. They go to East Lansing. Week Michigan at home in Ann Arbor to Houston. The ball inside the 10-yard line here for sure in Tennessee. This is a second down play. This is their rollout formation. Here he comes to the left. There's a penalty marker on the play. Schuler breaks a tackle out of bounds at the one yard line but there is a penalty flag the referee is got, let's see what he's got we have too many men on the field on the offense <laughs> you know they had three wide receivers in an eye formation as well evidently the tailback stayed in I always like that play down inside the 20. Hey, yeah, it works once in a while. I've seen people get away with it. Give me that 12th man. <laughs> That's a good one. Oh, God. That's a big penalty. Well, we've had a few here in the first half. We'd have 12 penalties in this game, seven of them against Florida, and this is the fifth against Tennessee, and it is huge. At the 49 second mark, the ball is brought back all the way to the 26 yard line. Now, Tennessee would like to pick up a few yards, and again, they'll go back to settling for the field goal, won't they? Yeah, well, they've been so efficient inside this uh, red zone. Of course, right now they're outside of it. Garner still short of it. Tripped up down at the 21-yard line. McMillan got in there behind him, and uh, so did Big Johnson got a hand on it. McMillan came down the line of scrimmage nicely, just like a defensive tackle auto. Last year, he was a backup defensive lineman for Brad Culpepper, who's now with the Minnesota, uh, yeah, Minnesota Vikings and playing well. Now it's third down. Garner cuts back beautifully, but only for a couple of yards. Miles stepped over from that linebacking spot and brought See, it down. That call dictated by having a quality field goal kicker. Don't want to take any chances going downfield, throw the interception. Have a real good kicker. This, let's go ahead and see if we get some more yards and let my field goal kicker come on the field and make it. Now, if he misses it, it's a bad decision. <laughs> Mark Holland, Dick is his snapper. Lance Wheaton will hold it, and Bexport will attempt the field goal here. With 14 seconds remaining in the first half, Steve Spurrier has to be pleased with that last drive. Oh, yeah. He lost his best running back early in the game, struggled mightily. Right now, he's down only seven. And if they make it here, he'll still go in down only ten. But he can certainly build on that scoring drive, can't he? Plus, he did it with Spurrier football. You know, receivers spread all over the field. Shane Matthews reading the defense properly. Picks out the error on the defensive coverage. Gets it to the right person. Hey, when you do that, you you're normally win a football game. Yeah. Well, uh, and the Gator assistant coaches will try to seal up that kicking game, won't they, in the uh, second half? Bexford is an outstanding student. Academic All-American in high school. Student body president. It's got everything going for him. All SEC freshman team last year. 
was 15 of 21 in the field goal. And boy, I'll tell you, again, on the practice field, this guy looks like an NFL kicker, and he's only a sophomore. And the state of Tennessee cares only about the education of that toe right now. 35-yarder. He hadn't had an opportunity to kick one in the game this year. Five for nine last year from this distance. On its way. Good. Big, big three points to go in at halftime with, you know, you lost a little momentum because you allowed Florida to take the ball and go in the field and, and get fired up because they put it in the end zone before the half. Now you come back and get a field goal after a nice run by Charlie Garner. Boy, what an edge that gives you. You just took a little off that long Spurrier drive. Can you imagine a nice Tennessee boy like Steve Spurrier winding up down there in Gatorland? Out of Johnson City, isn't he, where he was a great all around. miles athlete. away, yeah. How about that? Yeah, but they were running a single wing here. Yeah, that's hey, true. Yeah, he wanted to go down. Ray Graves told him he could throw it. He said, I'm going down there and throw it. I coached against him four years when he was at the 49ers of the court. Actually, he wanted to live with my colleague, Steve Mel 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 He's one of the big Gator boosters down just, there in that Jacksonville yeah, area. Yeah, I know he is. He sends me clippings and everything, man. He lets me know when I'm, I'm leaning too much to Tennessee. <laughs> now it's Jeff. He'll kick it off. Now it's Kennedy, put a hand down. Kennedy down at the 21-yard line. Four seconds to go. Then we'll all take a break and check in with our guy John Saunders here at halftime, won't we? You know, we were talking about Steve and uh, had an opportunity last night to ask him uh, how he compares himself with Shane Matthews as a quarterback. <laughs> Shoot. <laughs> He's a much better player. Now all the different coverages and uh, fake blitzes and schemes and so forth it's really a, it's a mind game a lot of times out there and, and Shane's got the mind to see things and fit it all together and make the plays so that wraps up our first half Tennessee with a 10-point lead John Saunders is coming up next from New York CFA College Football, this ABC Sports exclusive. Brought to you by American Honda, who has been making quality cars in America for the past... Hewler, Tennessee sophomore quarterback, established himself as the leader of the Volunteers. He made big plays under pressure, leading Tennessee on an 80-yard drive in the closing minutes to win the game. This fourth and 14 pass to Ronald Davis kept the drive alive. And then Schuler scored the go-ahead touchdown. Tennessee won a big game on the road, upsetting Georgia 34-31. Alabama struggled. Turner from the free safety spot cut him off on the sidelines. Oh. This had to be what NC State... Ready to start the second half. A look at the Tennessee bench. And Dick Vermeil, what about the Gator defense as we start the second half? Well, I think it's critical for them to come out and have a real good dominant series right here and, and, and gain some physical tempo to start this second half. Davis penalty flag down at the 20-yard line we had a lot of yellow in the first half and it continues here in the second half the numbers as he sure scored the first touchdown on that 11-yard run that put Tennessee up by seven they made it 14 on Stewart's run before Florida struck back on a nice drive, it was Aubrey Hill on a pass from Shane Matthews. Then the field goal by John Bexport. And that's where we stand right now, 17 to 7. As you look at the numbers, down at the bottom, Dick, that has been a critical difference, the starting field position. Oh, yes. With that block punt, it just magnifies their problem. Average starting on the 21-yard 20 yard line for Florida, 40-yard line for Tennessee. That's a much shorter field. Tennessee wanted to come in and run the football. They've run for 133 yards. They've good a good job of containing Florida's passing attack. It's much longer here. After that penalty, the ball moved back to the 10-yard line for Schuler and the Volunteers. And the fullback, the short man in that. There a fumble. By fumble. Formation, and Florida pounces on it. Mario Bronson took it inside. What are they calling? They call it ruling down or what? They might have ruled he was down. Ruling down. 
Mario Brunson doesn't get to carry the ball very many times. He carried 11 so far, 24 last year, and he's he was a converted offensive guard. Oh, and Spurrier, he's whizzed. Woo, look at him. There goes his visor. <laughs> After this play, Dick, we'll get an opportunity to take a look at that. And we'll let, let you all make up your minds. I, I honestly did not see it. Dick saw it first. Off a of play fake, Schuler down the middle, incomplete. Now, after that incompletion, let's take a look and see if this was a fumble by Brunson. A critical moment here early in the in the second half. It's a direct handoff, usually very easy exchange for the quarterback. See, he seats the ball in the stomach, gives him the football right there. It's in there. It's locked in tight nicely right now. He's up inside the hole. We can't see it right there. There's, hey, he's looking for the football. The ball is out. It, actually, it depends on who fell on it. No question, that was a fumble. No that question, act. it was out of there. Garner cut off and couldn't step away from the pressure and there is that domination as McMillan leads the Florida charge. They needed that kind of a defensive series here. Now see they're going to be in good field position punting out of your own end zone there. Uh, good job of defense in that series. So now it will be Hutton punting out of the Tennessee end zone. He averaged 43 6 in the first half. That's a low type punt. You normally can get a return. Ah, fell down. Jackson at the 49 yard line where Jackson it will be down first down for Florida. Star running back Eric Rett, an injured ankle, sitting out most of the first half, starts the second half for Florida over on that sideline, and the Gators will open with that no back attack and an extra wide receiver. A little wind in the air, gray skies, some rain could be closing in on Knoxville. See, this puts five people in position to head right downfield and spread those zones. Matthews hit on the delivery, a one hopper. There it is, Todd Kelly getting in there and get pressure on him right away. If you set up in five steps, you're only about six and a half yards behind and you throw in rhythm, normally you can't get hit. But he got back there and Todd Kelly got there darn near as quick as he did. Now, Spurrier wants to get into the no huddle right now and it was that quicker tempo that moved the ball, or at least helped them move the ball on their scoring drive and the young man, Green, comes right out of his three-point stance. He just pulled up and backed out, and Kelly causing him all kinds of problems. And another penalty flag comes down. See what happened is Big Reggie Green, the freshman. Foul. Foul start on the offense. He got beat by Todd Kelly the last snap. This time he looks up there and sees him lined up very, very wide. And so that made him nervous. He lost concentration on the snap count, concentrating on the fundamental technique of pass protection, misses the snap, illegal procedure. And the second official just confirmed it. That's why they were both voting with the... So they'll go again. They give it back to Matthews. Tried to freeze up the rush. He throws high and incomplete. That's an admission that the rush by the defensive line is causing Florida trouble when you do something like that. Yeah, you bring in those two tight ends, that puts two tight ends to help your tackles as they release, even if they release and pass. You'll see he tosses the ball now to Rhett, see, and he gets it right back to him. The old flea flicker play. I think the first time I ever saw that was by a Paul Brown coach football team. A little bit over the top. So the injured ankle now ready for a testing as Rhett back in the game and he'll give it back to Matthews again and they'll throw short again. and that was Kelly all over him number 58 Todd Kelly he came into the ball game with 58 career sacks and I really think this is more of a an assignment error than it is a physical breakdown top of your screen you'll see number 78 he steps down inside the tight end has him inside leaves that big gap and he just keeps coming they can't give him that much space to come underneath the tight end. He just gave him a simple bull rush. That's made right. Made that move to the inside Side. and kept on muscling through him that time. And Florida 
forced to punt. Hey, that's pretty good, Coach Mushberger. There, a I'm bull learning. rush. Hey, you're really coming on. Well, that's what Todd told me that he was going <laughs> to do against the young man. So I just remember what they told me. I <laughs> punt by Edge, fielded now by Summers. He and alley right side. Summers, 40, 45, across midfield. Shane Edge forced to make the stop, and there's that kicking game edge for the Volunteers again. John Summers, this young man in high school ran for over 6,000 yards, scored over 64 touchdowns. Many of the touchdowns were scored on punt returns. You can see why. Poor punt coverage. You must come to balance. Drop those hips, widen the base, keep your shoulders square, and move in and make the tackle. They're overrunning their ability to make the tackle. Kicking game again, killing them. Brunson and Garner are the Tennessee running backs. Off a of fake Schuler, sprinting out to the left. Throws high and incomplete. Had a man wide open at the 38-yard line. That was Faulkner. They can't say enough about Scholler around this campus. I was talking with Doug Dickey, at the, the athletic director, at, the, at dinner the other night, to, and he said he really reminds him of a Paul Horning because he, he has that look of a winner in his eye. He has great confidence, great poise, and he can do it all. Where's an interesting number? 21, John yep. Hadle. John Hadle out of Kansas. Number. Second and ten for Schuler and the Volunteers. That oh, play read beautifully defense. by McMillan, who has been a standout in that defensive line. And uh, Julie Moran, what about the numbers business down in Gainesville, Florida? Well, Brent, the only two jerseys that have ever been retired at the University of Florida are number 11, Steve Spurrier's, and number 55, Scott Brantley's. But that didn't sit too well with Coach Spurrier. He wanted to know about Emmett Smith's and Jack Youngblood's and Neil Anderson's. So what did he do? He called Brantley and said, let's unretire those jerseys. So you're taking a look at number 11, Ben Hanks. He's out there today, a redshirt freshman linebacker. And Coach Spurrier said, the only stipulation I have is that number 11 is not worn by a quarterback. So it's on Ben Hanks today. Number 21 on the Tennessee side was the ball carrier there. And a penalty flag down again. And you look at Hanks over there, who is being honored by wearing the the coach's old number. Kind of nice to see number 11 around again. And it's on the right kind of football player. You know, I think it's uh, it's good to unretire a number as long as it's your number you're unretiring. <laughs> <laughs> think George Steinbrenner will unretire number three when he gets back to Yankee Stadium? I kind of doubt it. Holding on the offense. The penalty is declined. Fourth down. Good defensive series. But because of the difference in the kicking game so far, Tennessee moved way down, and they should seal up the Florida offense. These great comments. See, now they're going to lose the great field position they started out with right off the bat. See, uh, their first drive was the best position they had. A long punt return ruined that, and right here, they're going to be in deep in their own territory. Jackson's going to let this one go in. They'll try to save it. It's in the end zone. It'll come out, touchback, out on the 20-yard line. We come back. Florida's ball. They trail it by 10. Uh, Florida opening up with a flea flicker. <laughs> well, there's no back to throw it back, throw it back to him in this series. This is what Shane Matthews likes best. This formation. No backs in the backfield. Spread them out and throw the ball. Green coming through. Couldn't hold Kelly again. Kelly all over him. Took an inside charge. And the freshman is getting an education. Well, he got an education. He's been beaten on the outside. This time, Todd Kelly gives him the move to the inside. Now, watch him take the inside. Number 78 green. He sets. There he comes hard to the inside, and he doesn't get his body over in front of him and jam him properly. Gives him that space. Todd Kelly, too strong. With that much space, he gets the quarterback. Got to teach that young man how to hold. <laughs> oh, he'll learn that. He'll learn that. Here's Matthews being replaced by Dean. This is the second time they've replaced quarterbacks. Dean is the quarterback, and uh, we'll take a break and check in with John Saunders. 
Tennessee upsetting Florida. They lead the Gators by 10. Matthews was substituted for only one play. Back on the field. See, they're showing blitz, but they're really not going to blitz. I think they're going to back out. Yeah, yeah, they backed out. Sent four and backed out. Matthews on the move. Throws incomplete. And Florida having difficulty with the noise and the blitz look at the line of scrimmage. Yes, they're used to seeing a blitz and being able to audible and get to the people they want to. Larry Marmy's plan was to show blitz and then back out of there, and that's what they did then. I think they called an audible. Now, you see the people up in there faking blitz. George Kidd, 42, dropped out of there. Ben did. Tally dropped out of there. A little pressure by the defensive end, but no one to throw to there. Just getting rid of the football. Edge will punt again. Summers. Low punt. Terrible punt. Out of bounds inside the 50-yard line. It's out at about the 48. You know, we've talked about the blitz, and ordinarily, Shane Matthews says his eyes light up when he sees the blitz, but he's not getting it. He's getting a fake blitz. Here's what he had to say. Oh, Tennessee comes after us. Now it is Tennessee with the ball using the fullback who smashes inside the 35-yard line. Matthews, incidentally, is 0 for 4 this half. He over there on the Gators sideline and uh, a guy with his quality, Brent, very seldom do you keep him down this long. Uh, I would be real surprised if he doesn't get some good drives going here before this ball game ends. They don't need to blitz when you're having just man-on-man -man line blocking protection problems uh, like they're having right now. Schuler options keeps it. Schuler, first down, Tennessee. And a reminder that at the conclusion of the game, we'll select a Chevrolet Most Valuable Player of the Game from each team. 22 years to the Chevrolet Scholarship Program. $1,000 donated to both Tennessee and Florida as the rain begins to come down in Knoxville. First and ten. Garner hit by Hanks. Hanks got him first from the side. That time Ron Zook, the defensive coordinator for Florida, brought the eight people. Linebackers inside came, linebackers outside came. Very little game. Second down and long for Tennessee. Eight and a half minutes to go in the third quarter. Here's Coach Zook. Brunson. Check that. That was Phillips, 19, who's in at fullback, down at the 35-yard line. Mose Phillips, number 19, is a kid. They use at fullback, and they also use him at the wingback position in their one-back attack. He has a lot of talent, this young guy. He was, a, he was a high school quarterback. The way the wind is blowing, Florida will be working against it in the fourth quarter. And the rain as well. Schuler, good block by his back. Steps outside, throws in complete. Carlton Miles got real good pressure on Schuler that time and knocked him down. Didn't allow him to get his shoulders turned up so he could throw that ball accurately. Boy, it's really coming down. Somebody, I believe, threw a smoke bomb down around the 19-yard line. One of the officials is at it now. They kick it off to the side. So they quickly clear the field here. Tennessee's punter will try to seal Florida up inside the 15-yard line if he can. Again, a real good defensive series again by the Florida kids. No, two straight. It'll come out on the 20. Now, I think it'd be smart if, if, if Spurrier, when he comes out here offensively, tries to get back to some of his running game because they have always been very well balanced in their attack. Well, here we're hard by the Tennessee River. Had an opportunity this week, Dick, to travel up through Chattanooga. 
stopped by Lookout Mountain. I was, I had forgotten, I guess, just how important and pivotal that battle was down there at the uh, Civil War. That's where the, the Federal Army struck back down there, and they've got a new aquarium, Chattanooga, all gussied up, looking good right now. <laughs> I know that you enjoyed it. Eric Red in the game, getting the call. So Eric Red is back in, and we're going to check in with our main guy, Big John Saunders. <laughs> USC and Oklahoma. Oklahoma throwing the ball with Gundy, huh? They did it against Virginia in the bowl game, and they haven't stopped, have they? Now on second down, Matthew throwing in the rain, and this is to Jackson out to the 32-yard line. First down for the Gators. Tally there defensively. You know, that tally has been all over the field. He was last week when we did the Georgia ball game. But see, having those backs in the backfield, it gives you the flexibility to also fake to run and come off and throw the pass, tie up those linebackers, as well as run just enough to slow down that pass rush. Now Keller, the tight end, lined up on the right side. Rhett with a penalty flag, a flying, and the play is stopped. This has been a sloppy football game, hasn't it? Well, there's a lot of freshmen playing out there for both sides. 22 of the kids in uniform for Florida are freshmen. Ball 12 foul. of them true Ball freshmen. Guard on the offense. Coach Furrier did everything he could in practice to assimilate the noise conditions that they were going to be confronted with today, but it, uh, they haven't done a good job of handling it. So a driving rainstorm. I tell you, this is a heck of an advantage for Tennessee. They must have ordered this rain. Because, I mean, it's more than a shower. It is pouring. The crowd is up and cheering the rain. They just break out their rain gear here in Tennessee and say, let's get it on. <laughs> it is healthy. Nayland Stadium. Matthew sets a screen to Rhett and Tally read it. Boy, it's almost impossible out there now. Also in that pass protection scheme, they brought a back over to help Reggie Green, the big young freshman offensive tackle, pass protect. Boy, I mean, the, the, the AstroTurf already is covered with water. That blow, ball will float away. Second down. Rep. Cut back. Down at the 35-yard line. Good job by Rep. Boy, do they need him. He is a difference maker in a football game because he can make even a play successful that's poorly blocked. When you go to tackle him, you've got to get all of him, see? And it's you get the ball back to him deep, and he can make you miss. See, and he has the long powerful legs and he can pull them through tackles this is a big third down coming up here they need almost seven yards Red oh. is smacked before he could get off the money jj surlis jj surlis a, a senior from mount pleasant pennsylvania his dad played linebacker at alabama here he is playing for tennessee took an inside move got underneath it on the draw the ball being handled off handed off deep like that brent he gets that inside move. He smacked it. How about blocking another punt in this rain, Coach? Oh, I tell you, the big thing now is to field and get the good snap. Harold Monk, the snapper, has 119 snaps coming in this ball game without ever snapping a bad one. He's going to be tested here. Oh, lousy punt. Low, bouncing punt. It's going to float away. <laughs> Takes a little gator roll here. Inside the 20 and down at the 16-yard line. Now I tell you, the quarterback, as he gets under center and looks up with the wind blowing the rain in the direction like that, those raindrops are going to be coming right inside those helmets. Again, Four. Florida's defense, Brent, has played well so far in the second half. You know, they've, they've shut him down, too. 4.30 to go in the third. Tennessee with a 10-point lead. Oh, Porter slips, breaks a tackle. Comes back and is out at the 22-yard line. How about that? 
Ellis Johnson, who hit him in the backfield, took an inside slant move on Jeff Smith, and that's how he got in there. He got in there cleanly. You'll see it right there in the middle of your screen. He beat, here he is there, he beat Smith inside with that slant move. Good movement by Garner. <laughs> it's amazing that traction he had on that. Brunson, ho, stood up. Carter, number 57, smacked him, but good. What a real nice job. Uh, they plugged it up inside. They wanted to go up inside. They plugged it. He tried to cut it outside and then back. See him now try to bend it back there. And here comes that defensive end, Carter. Good football position. Knees bent, head up, shoulder square. Nice tackling. Third down. Garner. First down. Pace. They found a running back in this guy. This guy, they actually had him tackle early, and he pulled his feet out of it in this kind of weather condition. Now watch the right side of your screen to get it back. To, now watch what he does his feet right there. You talk about balance. He stepped over. He stepped over the top of a guy, and now he has that acceleration to get outside. This guy is going to be a good one. <laughs> 75 yards here today. First and 10. It's amazing how those good running backs make you look like a smart football coach. Must avoid the turnovers. Florida will look for one. Garner, looking for daylight, dances back to the outside. <laughs> Makes his way to the 36. Not going to be. He is a good one. Yeah, and you know, the other thing on that, Brent, the fullback went in the wrong direction. His lead blocker made a mistake and went the wrong way. <laughs> Robert Todd, number 97, the tight end. We understand that uh, weather conditions are affecting our picture, leaving here our signal. We'll take care of that. Second down, Tennessee. They're coming after him. And Schuler left the ball there. There was uh, illegal procedure, and he pounced back down on it. He didn't want to give him a a free recovery in that situation. The young man went right back after that ball. There's Coach. Look at the water coming in. Somebody called the TVA. Brenton Dick. Come on up, Julie. Brenton Dick, right. the Tennessee River is here on the sidelines today. I want you to look at this. It rerouted itself and it came in the stadium. It's wet out here. You guys are lucky to be in that booth today. Oh, Got to get tough in this game. How about my feet? Are they wet enough? <laughs> this is why football is a war game, Coach Vermeer. <laughs> and you recognize that studying some of these Civil War battles, didn't you? That's right. Brunson. You know, uh, you know, you saw that graphic about the AstroTurf problems and Steve Spurrier's dislike for it. Sometimes if you talk to your squad about that stuff, you create your own problem because you put it in their mind mentally. Dick, the next time we talk to Julie, Remind me that umbrellas are illegal here at Nayland Stadium. Yeah, I, know. I can remember when we used to have tough sideline reporters. Don't you? Huh? Absolutely. World League and the storms over there in Barcelona. Yeah. Not a single umbrella. Look at this, huh? Let it rain. Uh-oh. Throw that fan out over there in section I. Here's Schuler. Goes complete. Wide open. He's going to score. What a play for Tennessee. Touchdown. Moss Phillips breaks out of the backfield.
it down there. Take a look at this now. You'll see the fullback most of They run a little counter bootleg here. See, they fake back, freeze people. They lose him coming out of the backfield. He gets hit right as he throws it. He gets a nice block down the left side of your screen by the wide receiver and just takes it on in. No one lays a hand on him. Good blocking by the wide receivers. Export adds the extra point. Twenty-four to seven, Tennessee. Apologize for our problems. Some heavy weather in the area. Some lightning strikes. Tennessee also struck like lightning today against Florida. Twenty-four seven. The Gators sealed up inside their own twenty-yard line. The crowd causing Shane some difficulty. Eric Rett, the ball carrier, Reggie Ingram was over there leading that defensive charge. Really nice inside-out pursuit. Shane Matthews saw the Bear defense, the old buddy Ryan look, and he tossed the ball on an audible away from it, but Reggie Ingram pursuing inside-out right in good position made the play. Florida forced the punt again. Shane Edge. was the first team all SEC uh, punter last year a second team All-American it's now time to call on that kind of ability big punt and stop the play the fake punt went right into the heart of the rush no way no chance that's a gutsy call and he was looking for a tempo changer and he did he changed the tempo again more in favor of tennessee Woo! that was a fourth and one call by coach spurrier for that trailing 24 to 7 <laughs> with still a quarter left to play in this game but then again Things have not been going their way. No, I think he did it because the weather uh, situation. He, he, you know, the, the weather's so bad, he's just taking advantage of anything he might get in a one-yard game. Has a shot. There's Garner cut off. Now, coming into this game, Florida ranked fourth in our two main polls. Tennessee, 14th. Now, you can speculate how high will Tennessee jump and how far will Florida fall. And, of course, a lot depends on the rest of the game. Washington with a big one tonight out west against against Nebraska. But mm. you can see how the water now flooding the sidelines here at Nayland Stadium. And still a quarter to go in these conditions. Here's a young quarterback, Schuler on the roll. 15, 10, and down at the seven-yard line. They're blocking everybody at the point of attack that can get to him and contain him. Blocked by the wing, blocked by the slot man, lead blocked by the, the running back. It's a cut down right there. It didn't just nice running and good running ability by Schuler. They've got to get somebody in that quarterback's face if they're going to stop him from getting outside there. Poor tackling right there by number two, Willie White. A 17-yard gain as the third quarter comes to an end. It's 24 to 7. We'll return after this message and a word from our ABC station. Boatsmen, we've sprung a leak in Knoxville. Hell with the rowboats. Call the plumber. <laughs> Roto, where are you? That weatherman told me it would clear this afternoon. Huh? Can't ever trust the weatherman. It is clearing a little bit here to our left. <laughs> <laughs> About two more hours and it's probably stop in. First and goal at the six. Anticipate the sprint out. It's worked all day. Garner pops to the three. When you go back and look at the whole mosaic of this game, just about every facet of the kicking game has exploded in Florida's face. It they really missed a field goal when it was scoreless. They had a punt block. They fumbled a punt return and pounced on it in bad field position. And now they can't convert fourth and one. And they allow it allowed a long punt return. The critical difference today. And Tennessee has not made, now I was about to say, haven't made any mistakes. 
and Garner gets back down on that ball. They almost gave it up there. They were going to try to run that track counter that they ran uh, in the, I think it was for their last touchdown. And uh, it just got botched here at the quarterback center exchange. The big thing for an offensive center in this situation is not to be concerned about his blocking at time. Just make sure you get the ball up and then block if you have anything left. to the right and looking for a receiver here. Keep it. Schuller battled his way in for a touchdown. Boy, this kid is a tough kid. He runs like a running back, though he is a quarterback. Good legs on him. Physically well put together. Really skilled. High school parade. USA Today All-American. Demonstrating and why he won those honors. Shane Matthews came in here as a nominee, a leading candidate for the Heisman. This guy will be in that category two years down the road. Next for it. and Knoxville don't even know it's raining. I love it every point right now. On your truck to last, here's 19 years, and now with his boss recovering, Philip Fulmer is making quite a name for himself. He went down to Athens, and they upset the Bulldogs last week, and now they're corralling the favored Gators here in Knoxville, and Philip Fulmer will wind up as a head coach somewhere in college football. Meanwhile, Johnny Majors is watching the game on TV, and he tells us, at least he told Julie, that's not easy, watching football games on television. It's pretty difficult to explain. It's, it, it pulls apart watching the game at home on television where you're, the team you've been involved with as head coach is playing like against Georgia last week. Uh, that's the first time that's happened uh, uh, in my entire career. This is the first time since 1949 when I was a freshman in high school. And I've not been working on Labor Day or practicing on Labor Day. That's been unusual. But he is dry, folks. <laughs> and he really looks great. We had a great opportunity to visit with him yesterday, and there's nobody happier for Coach Fulmer than Coach Majors right now. He is about to become a most popular fella. You know, there's a quality about this guy uh, that I think players will uh, really appreciate and have over the years. He comes across very warm, very sincere, with a deep interest in the kids that he coaches. Well, Terry Dean, who has been in a couple of times earlier in the game, now steps into, we would assume, finish up. Here's a reverse, and Hill, who scored the Florida touchdown, is the ball carrier, close to a first down. Steve Session there defensively for the Volunteers. You cannot say enough about the coaching job on the Tennessee sideline, on both sides. Well, no question. You know, I had an opportunity to talk to the defensive line coach for Tennessee yesterday, Ray Hamilton. Many of you fans that follow uh, East Coast football remember him playing for New England Patriots, and he's been in pro coaching. And he said coaching in college, he's really learning how to teach the game, and he's really enjoying his experience here at, at Tennessee. Third and one. First down, Gators. John Saunders, what do you got for us? USC and Oklahoma. Here, it could be blowout city. 31-7, Tennessee. They are moving to the top spot in the Eastern Division of the Southeastern Conference. Gators are going nowhere in this monsoon, yet Tuskegee <laughs> is there defensively. A man out of Canada. At the top of the day, we told you about the divisions. Worth taking a second look at how they line up. Tennessee came in. And with this, they would have a couple of conference wins. That's their overall record. Alabama favored in the West. And you know what happened Thursday night? The Gators have to go over to Mississippi State to play our old buddy Jackie Sherrill. Fumble! And Dean gets on it, and he's wrapped up. And, and folks, I got to tell you, it was just amazing in reading the papers this week because my buddy Dick Vermeil 
he had called Jackie Sherrill a few weeks ago and he said, I want you to castigate those Longhorns. And I, I don't, you must have a bad phone connection. <laughs> I mean, it's just, I, he, he just must not hey. have heard you over there. Oh, <laughs> hey, throw the flag on that. Well, you got 15 yard personal foul right there. <laughs> oh. yeah. But, but meanwhile, give the new technical <laughs> foul right there. <laughs> but send the Newt Rockney <laughs> Award along. Hell, I don't even know what that means. I couldn't have told him that. <laughs> <laughs> Timeout is being called. It's all breaking up down here. <laughs> We've got 11 minutes to go. <laughs> 31 to 7. Oh, my goodness gracious. It takes a lot. There was a flag on the play as you left, then a failed end around, and now the Gators force the punt. Hard to punt a wet football. It weighs about two pounds more. Low. Summers stopped at midfield. Now the volunteers will go to work on ten and a half minutes. And a reminder, Monday night, Soldier Field, Chicago. Mr. Lawrence Taylor invites one and all to drop by and he's going to play him. Jerry Colquitt checks in as the Tennessee quarterback. He'll get some playing time here as the skies begin to clear. They opened up on cue for the volunteer. <laughs> yes. Boy, it's tough to come down here as a visiting team. The very first game, Brent, that I ever coached as a head coach at UCLA was here in Tennessee against Tennessee in 1974. We ended up with a 17 to 17 tie. But I'll tell you what an experience it was. There is Keith he Schuler. You can see why he was a USA Today Parade Magazine High School All-American. He also won the state high jump championship at six foot nine. Hit the baseball for a 390 average. Not bad. Came close to seven feet. That's right. He was telling you about that last night. He came. I think he went jumped seven feet when he scored that last touchdown. <laughs> His mother and father and a lot of his relatives from nearby over in North Carolina here enjoying the young man's performance. He is built like a decathlete. His strong hands and arms and uh, Steve Spurrier tried to recruit him when he was still a head coach at Duke and uh, boy Steve wishes he'd been successful there and he didn't have to face him this afternoon. <laughs> yeah, you bet. Now he's back up. Colquitt. And he's a young man with, uh, with a lot of ability on the field now and uh, They'll run it out. Eddie Robinson making the stop. There's our lineup. Next is where will the Eastern voting block go? And with Marshall Falk about to be televised into the Northeast next week, he could pick up a lot of support. This is Hayden, the tailback. This has been a, a wonderful team performance by the volunteers here this afternoon. And certainly they will jump up in the polls. They'll get the upper hand in the Eastern Division. Florida and Georgia have a game down in Jacksonville later in the season. That figures to be a big one. And Alabama comes in here to Knoxville. You can just circle that one against Tennessee because that will be a monster meeting in the Southeastern Conference. You know, and, and Tennessee is relatively a young football team, too. I mean, starting out this strong, but they only have three seniors starting on, on offense. And they have some freshmen in there, redshirt freshmen, but uh, real young and a lot of room to grow and get better. for a first down fumble and recovered by Grow of Florida. That looked like it got stripped early from the way I saw it. Twenty-four points down. You gotta get a, you gotta get a lot of things going for you right now. And obviously the Spurrier has sort of uh, conceded this and getting some other players some experience, getting Dean some experience at the quarterback position. So if he needs them later in a tight football game when they're playing better, he'll be ready to play. And the whistle had sounded because a flag was thrown on the play. And Guess what? <laughs> The big rookie freshman tackle, Reggie Green, moved early. Red ball foul, ball start on the offense. Let's quickly check in with John Saunders. John? 
Brent Sean Jackson here on the handoff. To me, Brent, that's a surprise to me. Yeah. I, uh, a bad day for Gator fans just got worse. Ooh. As Florida State will stay in that chase for a national championship, ACC title. Florida still has time. You know, Dick, really, I think six of Spurrier's players were drafted by the NFL. Isn't yeah, that the number, number I go out? Well, I, you've got to be realistic. You just don't overnight replace NFL draftees. I no. don't care who you are, what you've got as freshmen. It takes time and fairness to the program down there. Intercepted by Parker. The freshman picks it off. And in fairness to the program, an awful lot was being demanded. Yes, he's got great skill players, but today you're seeing that it takes a lot more than that. You've got to have the fellas down in the trenches, don't yes, you? Yes, you bet. Here's Jason Parker making his first career interception. A true freshman. He reads it all the way, goes in and picks it off. Nice job, Jason. Getting to know. Knoxville, Tennessee. The Volunteers, 31. The favored Florida Gators, 7. It was 17 to 7 at the half, and Florida has been held scoreless here in the second half. Backup quarterback Jerry Colquitt working on the clock for Tennessee. Brent, you know the problem with this ball game beyond the loss for uh, for Florida is the offensive game plan for Tennessee and using the two tight ends and splitting them out slightly and forcing them to reduce their defensive ends in on the tackle gives other people ideas too. So it creates problems down the road as well as creating the problem for today. Score by quarters will tell you a story. Florida threatened first, had a first and goal at the six, missed a field goal. Then it was Tennessee jumping up. They led it by 14 before Florida got on the board. In the second half, Tennessee with a pair of touchdowns, and the Gators are scoreless. Colquitt, a good option quarterback, brings it down the line, and he is stuffed by the two Gators there. That yeah, Willie White at the free safety position, and watching him play last week on tape against uh, Kentucky, I can see why everybody says, uh, says he is just a great football player, and you know, a two-time All-SEC player, and. Uh, he makes plays all over the football field, and I, I really believe he has a, a great career ahead of him in the National Football League. He is a senior from Tallahassee. Third and six. There's that. Cole Quit. Trying to get the first down. Depends where they mark this one. There again, there's that problem with the quarterback sprint out and getting everybody blocked, bringing the slot man down and, and blocking, blocking with the wing man and no one to confront the quarterback. Just missed. He might as well go for this, not with the concern for scoring, but just giving some other younger players and a young quarterback an opportunity to play. Colquitt ready to go. Keeping the clock running. They like to run toward the wing back, that up back in this kind of formation. That's what they do. He made it. So it is a first down for Tennessee. You really got to give the, the offensive staff at Tennessee some credit, you know. Phil a former who's acting as the head coach also coordinates the offense with the David Cutliffe the quarterback coach who helped him coordinate Mark Bradley the tight end Charlie Coe the running back they didn't make it so they come up just a little short poor spot <laughs> Dean off a fake, incomplete. That was Jeremy Kennedy, a freshman tight end from Oklahoma City, Oklahoma. Trying to get a handle on that one. 
So you see Spurrier getting some young kids play. He was not even listed on the three deep. So you let some young kids get in there and get some experience. A lot of young people on that roster. Dean again chased out of the pocket. And a good nice game. tackle. A tackle by Devon Jenkins. And uh, next here on ABC, it'll be Notre Dame and Michigan State. Think of that one. I'm not going to make a comment on that one. I know who should win it. <laughs> Central Michigan. Third and four. Dean. Incomplete. <laughs> He pulled the string on that one. He just didn't go ahead and throw it. All the freshman receivers getting some playing time for Florida. That was Palmer, the young man out of Louisiana. Dean now 0 for 4 with an interception. And the punter back on the field. And there's the young man who pulled them all back. Shane Summers. Sean Summers, I should say. He's out of Oak Ridge here in Tennessee. He's a freshman. Well, there's a hero of days gone by down there with Julie Condridge Holloway. Down we go to Julie. Well, Brent uh, Condridge is down here on the sideline, and we remember, and um, we were talking about the day in 1974 when you burned Dick Vermeil, <laughs> and I just want you to describe that no-huddle sleeper play that got coached. Well, what we were trying to do is get Stanley Morgan isolated, and uh, we did that by running one running play, and then we lined up quickly with no huddle. Got Stanley Morgan lined up on a one-on-one -on -one situation, and it was a big, long touchdown, big play for us. Condrich, do you realize that was Coach Vermeil's first head <laughs> That's coaching what I job, think I first <laughs> national television exposure, and you ruined his day? Well, Coach, I'm sorry about that, but I, really, I, I like what he's doing now. I'd like to swap uh, positions with him. Yeah. <laughs> Condrich, what are you up to lately? Well, I'm working for Sports Bell, and we make athletic uniforms. In fact, a sample of our goods is right on the field here we do Tennessee's uniforms and I've been working there the last eight months and doing a little color commentary for UTV so I've got a new hero now Brent Musburger I want to be like him when I grow up. <laughs> Dick, is there anything you'd like to say to Condridge while we That's got him here? A, that was not an ethical play to run on a well, rookie coach. Cody, Con Con it was a good play Con but it was away. fair. Should be in the Hall of Fame. Yeah. Yeah. All right thanks for stopping by back after you Brent. <laughs> I must say that Dick Vermeil hasn't been the same since that play. I tell you you can imagine the system there and see your defense in the huddle and they come out and a fast no, a no huddle thing line up in a tight Stanley Morgan the tight end and he runs down the sideline no one covering him throws in the ball for a touchdown and I, I mean I could not believe it Bill Battle was the head coach at that time fine football coach well a big day for Tennessee volunteers just like last year was down in Gainesville for the Gators huh Gators have had unbelievable success for a couple of years in the Southeastern Conference, and uh, folks around this part of the country figured it might get a little bit tough here one of these days for uh, for Coach Spurrier, and that's what happened here this afternoon. I think sometimes teams like that and programs like that are given credit because they have a few great guys coming back, but they forget to count the number of good ones they, they lost. Yeah, exactly. There's Phillips. He scored a big touchdown in the second half. They broke a long left pass play, and a reminder that the time permits, stay tuned for the thrifty car rental post-game report. We'll have scores and highlights from John Saunders. Missed you at the symphony last night. Coach, I know you were busy with the X's and O's, but this uh, Knoxville Symphony put on a good show last night. Kirk Trevor, the conductor over there, is a big sports fan. He never misses one of these volunteer hey, games. Our producer, Kim Belton, had me working. <laughs> you know. <laughs> I'd already done my work early, folks. <laughs> I'd over and listen to the penis. <laughs> it's a handoff to Phillips. <laughs> yeah, but we also met the conductor in the athletic department the other day. I'm going to tell a story of you, and he gave you an opportunity at a, a different outing to go ahead and get in front of the band, and he showed you how to do it. He said you were terrible. Oh, I was off. <laughs> I didn't realize it took that much ability to lead an orchestra. <laughs> they just waved their arms. Yeah, I thought you just stood up there and, you know, flapped around like a big bird. I tell you, if it doesn't have a Neil Diamond beat, I can't handle it. <laughs> <laughs> Third and two. As you can tell, folks, this one's over. <laughs> 
or empty in the saddlebags. <laughs> First down, Tennessee. Stewart. You know, the good thing about a ball game like this, this when they separate, is that a lot of kids that practice hard, go through training camps, go through spring practices, they finally get a chance to play. Oh, Smokey. Had to dry off a little bit there when that monsoon hit Knoxville a short time ago. And now with this one over, old Smokey likes to check out the cheerleaders and, and everybody, see what's going on. A lot, of, a lot of the folks still hanging in there. Boston College going to have a have a good year with that coach. Culprit, option, good move, good cut. Chirp there defensively. You know, some of the uh, new watchers of Tennessee football may not realize that he, he was been alternating in there in the first ball game as a quarterback with Heath Schuler as they try to determine who really was the best football player. You, and you can see that he, too, has ability to move the football. You don't think anybody used that pay-per-view to watch USC Oklahoma on us, do you, Dick? You think I, they all I stuck around? It's a bad choice if they did. 31-7. Yeah, right. <laughs> Look at that. You talk about Tennessee came in with the intent to run the football. Last year, they ran the ball for 49 yards. Got feet. 38, 35 to 18. This time, they come in and they run the football. And uh, in fairness to Florida, Rhett leaving early with the ankle injury didn't help, did it? No. Some good seniors, and all of a sudden, you recognize how important those other good players were. Yeah, you bet. Experience in that offensive line is just so critical. And I'll tell you, the AstroTurf is jumping up to bite him again, too. He doesn't like it. He's going to like it worse after oh, today. It was man. all wet. <laughs> He'll probably have his wife tear up all the carpets back home. <laughs> <laughs> Hardwood floors for him. You bet. The tile. The whole deal. Hey, you're not having it? any of this stuff around the Spurrier household. I didn't like AstroTurf either. Third and one. They had been playing air football until these last couple of drives. And they start. Well, a chance for the, the Gators here, a minute and 30. They'll. They got another quarterback in there, do they? Antoine Childs, is that the youngster's name? Oh, he can throw, too. Oh, Good-looking arm. Oh, does there, that ball it? zip, huh? Woo! He's got a little of juice in that arm. He's out of Lauderdale Lakes, Florida. He's a 6'2 freshman, 220 pounds. Look at He's built like a linebacker. And he's big. Uh, Chris Doreen made that catch. You know, you know I, I can't imagine anyone going to a symphony a night before a football game. <laughs> you know, that, that still shakes me up a little bit. That's... <laughs> That's where Johnny Majors went the week of the Notre Dame game, and look what happened to him. <laughs> well, Antoine someday looked down the road at the NFL. Well, this one wrapping up in uh, a huge win for Tennessee in the Southeastern Conference. They have now beaten, they have now beaten both Georgia and Florida. Look at that helmet. That's look at that helmet on backwards. That's tool shed. He forgot what was the front of the back of the tool shed, didn't he? <laughs> That's number 38 color. Didn't check. Reynolds come out of Tennessee. You yes, bet he, he did. did. Old Hexaw. He calls the coaching staff every now and then about four in the morning. <laughs> Invites him to come down to his island. He owns an island. Well, here are our Chevrolet most valuable players of the game. From Florida, Kevin Carter. Played an outstanding game defensively. And from Tennessee, Todd Kelly. Did the same from that defensive end spot over there. And Chevrolet donates $1,000 to each school's general scholarship fund to reward outstanding students for their academic achievements and to assist those in financial need. And they can 
thought the celebration down there at the old steakhouse and old Charlie's and all the rest of these good spots in Knoxville. Oh, oh, oh. Not quite yet, say the Gators. Let's have one with Daryl Frazier for a touchdown. He yes. does be. Yes, he did. You know, he's a walk-on. He came with school without a scholarship, awarded a scholarship. And I wonder if they'll try an onside kick and they do just that. <laughs> did it go the 10 yards? No, it didn't. It might have been touched prior to it. Then it can be recovered by the, the offensive return team. Folks, Dick Vermeil always gives me a cheat sheet for the game, things to watch for. And here's one I didn't see. A quick kick from a shotgun look for Tennessee. <laughs> they didn't need it. Oh, okay. <laughs> Maybe next week up at Michigan. <laughs> well, it's a young football team. This is probably good for Florida. You know that? You always hate to lose a game, but uh, that's the rationale you use sometimes. But, yeah, I'll tell you, uh, easy for me to say. Yeah, it's easy. There's two shed right there. Look at that. He's got sand in his helmet. <laughs> yeah, you bet. He's a, he's a cut out of the Jack Reynolds. You yeah, bet. he is. He's a hacksaw. That's it. They're going to wrap it up. Bring the final six of that clock on down. Tennessee's off to a heck of a start, aren't they? Good football team, and only will get better. So neither one of us anticipated this kind of a ball game. Oh, I don't think anybody expected a route. There's Coach Spurrier with Coach Comer. Great day for him, and better days ahead again for Coach Spurrier, we're sure. So for Dick Vermeil and Julie Moran, I'm Brad Musburger. So long, everybody. Between number four, Florida, and number 14, Tennessee, in Knoxville. Now, the last time the Gators lost an SEC game, in fact, Steve Spurrier's only loss as Florida coach in the SEC. Well, that came on the road at Tennessee in 1990. And it happened again. Tough times for Florida early as Eric Rett sat on the sidelines with a hurt ankle. A downpour in the third bit did not deter Tennessee. Keith Schuler, the quarterback, hitting Moe Phillips out of the backfield. Phillips all the way, 39 yards for the score. As the Vols extend their lead to 27-4, and four, Schuler also ran for a pair of touchdowns as the Volunteers end Florida's 11-game SEC winning streak, and they are having a great season, even without Johnny Majors. Now to Norman, the USC Trojans and the... Back-to-back -back upsets for the Volunteers of Tennessee. A week ago, they went into Athens, Georgia, and defeated the Bulldogs. And here today at home, they drop off the favored Florida Gators. Hello, everybody. I'm Brad Musburger. It was their young quarterback, Keith Schuler, doing the job. This was the first touchdown of the game. An 11-yard third down run. Overall, Schuler on the day carried 10 times for 46 yards and two touchdowns. This was their fourth touchdown. Came during a driving rainstorm as Tennessee beats up on Florida. And afterwards, Coach Fulmer shaking hands with Coach Spurrier. A big day for the interim coach here at Tennessee, Philip Fulmer. Tennessee undefeated and the early leader in the SEC East. Let's look elsewhere now. The number five on game day. You heard Johnny Majors say he wants to come back very soon. In the meantime, Philip Fulmer has things rolling. Majors also said the ground game would be key, and Florida took a hit when Eric Rett was out. He only had 34 yards, so Spurrier would have to lean on Shane Matthews, and he was pressure all day, Lee. Yes, the offensive line from Florida has two legitimate freshmen on the team, and they're having a difficult time. Here they try to quarterback draw, but the quickness of the Tennessee defense swarms Shane Matthews. And the quickness of the special teams coming in big here. Tracy Smith blocks the punt by Shane Edge. It led to a Heath Schuler touchdown run. The ball is up 17-7 at halftime, and then the skies open up with the Smoky Mountains, and the downpour came. Heath Schuler, though, dealing with the weather, gets it to Moss Phillips, navigates through the deep water, charting a course for the end zone, 66 yards and a touchdown, another blowout in this series. Second time in two visits to Knoxville, the Gators have been routed 31-14 as the Vols roll up 250 yards on the ground. Quarterback comparison, a lot of focus on Matthews and also on Eric Zire in the SEC. Keith Schuler only threw for 94 yards, but the three touchdowns and the big touchdown pass we saw right there to Moss Phillips and Matthews perhaps dropping out of Heisman Trophy contention. Another good ball game, LSU and Auburn. 
through three quarters, the Auburn Tigers... That's in a row over favorites in the SEC East without Johnny Majors there. Well, and when Johnny Majors returns, we had him on live here earlier today on game day. When Majors returns to the ball club, he's going to give this team a tremendous boost. You're talking about a ball club that's got a lot of momentum. He's got leadership and experience that will help him march through that Southeastern Conference. They still have Alabama in the third Saturday in October, but the hardest part of their schedule is now behind them. Lee, what about Texas A&M? Not impressive, but they...